Hi, and welcome to the 1010 Diverse Show, episode 71. Today, we've got either 13 or 14 artists. We're going to quickly promote one of their songs, you know, tell us who they are as an artist and the story behind the song. So a return to the show for the wonderful Rosita Stone. Could you introduce yourself? Who is Rosita Stone and what's the story behind your song? Love to the world. Hi, my name is Rosita Stone. I'm an, presently in Canada. I'm an international artist. I've won uh, some awards. I work really hard for it. I'm a songwriter, a performer, a producer, and a dancer, a director. And I, I strive to do all I can in this world. It's not easy. The song Love to the World is a collaboration. I wrote it and I collaborated with uh, Chris Flores, who's out of LA. He was worked with um, Rihanna slash uh, Black Eyed Peas. Um, and we uh, we collaborated on it and it turned out amazing. Love to the world. Really, the idea about it is we are all born because, you know, there's all sorts of stuff going on in the world. But really, at the end of the day, we are all born to bring love to this world. Really, all of us, no matter what skin color, race, uh, you know, ethnicity, uh, you know, whatever our differences are, uh, we are all born to to bring love to the world. And if there's even one person in this world who we can you know, who has our back, then we are rich, richer than rich. So, so <laughs> I could go on about it, but it's a, it's a song that's really close to my heart. And we did really well. I did really well with this song. We went to number one on several networks worldwide, about 25 networks worldwide. It went to number one. And it's, as an independent Canadian artist, I'm really proud of myself for that. So I just, you know, like a pit bull pushing it forward, you know, you have to be. <laughs> Rosita Stone, you're absolutely fantastic. And you don't even need our help here. You're already flying high, but check. Well, this. we all need help. I do need the help. It's just, you know, the, I'm really good at promotion, all these things. And what, you know, what it seems sometimes isn't behind, you know, behind the scenes, well, but we all I'm need help. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I see you get a hundred thousand views within a month uh, before you even join us on your songs on average. So yeah, I pre-promoted, pre-promoted like crazy to certain niche and certain radios that had played me before, and just oh, it was a lot of work. You know, really, it, absolutely- it's not easy. You're fantastic. Without further oh. ado, let's get acquainted with Rosita Stone's music. If you're not already, you're gonna love her. Love to the world. Bye, the one and only Rosita Stone. Enjoy, Thank ladies. You.
Rosita Stone, everybody. Just my thank you. Welcome to the show, Jenny. There. So the way we're going to do this show tonight is, in case you all don't know, we've got three people in here with either a radio station or a radio show. Who is Charlie Souza, Kimbo, and Kerry's jukebox? Kimbo from Kelt Tash. Charlie, you can tell us about your show. I would like the three radio personalities to just quickly say something to each guest, if you can, ladies first. Kerry, Kimbo, Charlie. In that order, what was your thoughts there, Kerry? I thought it's very sultry and absolutely great production. Your vocals are uh, absolutely spot on. If you'd like to send it in to me, I'll be happy to play it on my show. I will. Can I get your uh, your information from Sparky after? Or yeah, you... absolutely. Okay, great. Thank Why you don't so you much. put it in the chat? Why don't you drop all your links in the chat for between yourselves? But then I'll put it all in okay. an article as well. But okay, okay just just great. drop your stuff here. Same with you, Kimbo. Then Charlie, uh, Kimbo, Kelt Tash. Well, I uh, really appreciate um, it's 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 poppy, but it's message yes. pop. And, yes. you know, a lot of times there's not a lot of substance in music these days. And sometimes it's a little too dark. Um, this, I thought, was very positive and up. And I think, you know, like that's just what the world needs. Uh, uh, seriously. Somebody mentioned the word sultry. I, I agree with that. Sultry <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, pretty hot vid. Uh, so all of that rolled in, man. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well said, dude. Well said. You're well right, Kimball. You're very right. It's like all we need is love in this world. And uh, it's a beautiful lady and some beautiful music. Wow. Come on, Rosita. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well said. Thank you so much. You know, normally I write really serious songs, but uh, normally my songs are serious, more like uh, different. But that's the first song I really wanted to nail, like a song that was like a global pop hit like that with with, you know, so I, I really went for that. And uh, so, yeah, so it's, it's well, different than that. what I did. You did before. You Honestly, did I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't go amiss for you, the fact that you're so pretty as well, then it, Rosita? So how does anyone find you? Have you got a website or any of these things? Then we're up to Clark Ford as our next guest. So Yes, do... rositastone.com, like my name, R-O-S-I-T-A, not Rosetta, but rositastone.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Rosita Stone. Instagram, Rosita Stone Music. Just look me up and uh, follow me. And, <laughs> uh, I'll, and I'll follow you. Whoever follows me, I follow back, right? Yeah. <laughs> Rosita Stone, till the next time. Thank you. Thank that you so from much. Thank from you. Toronto over to another part of the USA. I didn't actually get it. Clark Ford, could you introduce yourself? Who is Clark Ford as an artist? And what's the story behind your song? I don't oh, okay. want to work today. I don't want to work today. Could you tell me, please? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm very pleased to be here. And uh, hi to everyone. Um, and um, uh, I'm from... Uh, well, I'm originally from California, so another West Coast person, but but I'm living in Iowa. I've lived here for a number of years. I'm now retired, and that kind of figures into this song, I think. I was working when I was writing this song, but I didn't want to be working. And and but but I had an adult, young adult son. And so I I just uh I, I told myself I was writing this song about my for for my young adult son. You know, it's kind of a uh, <clears throat> morality tale about uh, not wanting to get out of bed and go to work. It's just a fun, fun little country song. Nothing, 
nothing meaningful like like your song, Rosita. <laughs> It's just a fun little country song hey, called. It's absolutely brilliant, Clark. Honestly, don't you put yourself down like that. What do you hear that song, ladies and gentlemen? I don't want to work today. Sounds like a Bruno Mars song, did it? Uh, by Clark Ford. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Masterclass. I don't want to work today. I just want to sleep in. Watch TV and hang out with you. I don't want to work the day. I just want to lay around, do the thing that we do. I just want to play. Maybe I'll call in sick, crawl back into bed, pull the covers over my head. Just want. Off, snuggling where it's warm and soft. I don't want to work today, I just want to sleep in, watch TV and hang out with you. I don't want to work today, I just want to lay around, do the thing that we do. I just want to play. This job doesn't pay. But I can't afford to be fired If I lose my job, don't know what I'll do They'll take my house and my car I'll lose everything, including you But I don't want to work today I just want to sleep in Watch TV and hang out with you I don't want to work I just want to lay around, do the thing that we do. I just want to play. Adulting is way too hard. Who invented it anyway? All I want Just wanna sleep in, watch TV and hang out with you. I don't wanna work today, I just wanna lay around, do the thing that we do. I just wanna play. I don't wanna work today, I just wanna sleep in, watch TV and hang out with you. I don't wanna work today, I just wanna lay around, do the thing that we do. I just wanna play. Absolutely incredible. Loved it. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So sorry, I'm having trouble. People try to come. Um, so let's go the same again, the same order each time. Ladies first. Kerry, Kimbo, Charlie, what was your thoughts on Clark Ford's brilliant song there? I well, love the next guest. I love the lyrics, they're very relatable, you know, very, very catchy and very nice vocals. I'd be happy to play on my show. Okay. Nice one, nice one. Yeah, it was a beautiful harmony, beautiful harmony. And, it, the, the, you know, that's what I do every day. I sleep in. So I love the song. Yeah. Great, great stuff. Thank you. Nice one, <laughs> nice one. Kimbo? Well, I'll tell you, um, when you work, and especially if you're in a cold climate <laughs> and it's raining outside, last thing you want to do is get out of bed. I, I'm serious. And you're going through that in your head. Now, how can I call off? And you know you can't, so you know you got to get up and get to it. So I think it's something we're all familiar with. And the closer you get to retirement, the worse it gets. <laughs> you know, it's like maybe I'll just call off and that'll be that. But uh, yeah, a fun song and uh, highly relatable. 
to most people in the world, I think. So good job, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Brilliant, Clark. You seem like such a happy and lovable guy as well. Look at him, like smiling. I, I love I love seeing people take the big smiles and they get their compliments. So thanks to the, the I'm calling these the, the the judges, not the X Factor judges. We need to come up with a name for who you people are. But Clark Ford, how does anyone find you, Dave? Do you have a website or what's the best way for anyone to contact you? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, you know, it's uh, but that's not the best way to contact me. Uh, probably um, Facebook or Instagram or you know, I'm, or YouTube or I don't know. I'm all over the place, or I try to be. But it's obviously a low budget operation. My video was uh, <clears throat> low budget. <laughs> nice one, nice one, nice one. So, Clark Ford, thank you for being a marvelous guest. Until the next time, dude. Thank you. So from Iowa over to Nashville, Tennessee. I don't know if he's actually in that exact town at the moment, but Russ Stallings, uh, this is your show now, six or seven time coming back here. Mr. Russ Stallings, who are you as an artist and what's the story behind your song, That Be You? Hey, uh, <clears throat> yeah, my name's Russ Stallings. I'm a songwriter and uh, I sing a little bit too. And uh yeah, I, I wrote this song uh, here. It's called uh, That Would Be You. Uh, wrote this song with a guy named uh, J. Mark Bailey. And so we wrote this song together. Uh, we wrote this song sitting, we were sitting outside. Uh, we were uh, watching, you know, looking at nature. Uh, it was in the fall uh, season or the beginning of the fall season. We're about to enter into looking at the creek. Uh, look at the sun coming up. Uh, so uh, you'll hear those uh, those lyrics uh, in the song. And uh, I actually wrote this song about about my wife. A lot of my songs are about that. We've been married 30 years. So uh, just uh, that's what the song's about. Russ, you're one of the most humblest uh, artists I've ever met. This guy is world class. He is country. He's going to be my co-host in the country show. So that, that's something for the future. But sit back and enjoy this marvellous piece of work. That would be you. That would be you. It's that language where it's got this apostrophe in the D, but you know how the Nashville talk. That be you <laughs> by Russ Downs. Sit back and enjoy. One lap. Country sunrise and a misty morning Someone fills my heart with blue skies And endless summer days That'd be you I don't want to live without you That'd be you You take my breath away You're beautiful on the outside and the inside I want you to know Thank God every day For this precious woman that he sent me That'd be you Sound of water on the creek bank Smells of autumn me at ease. First sip of coffee with a good book. The places I go to when I need peace. That'd be you. I don't want to live without you. That'd be you. You take my breath away. You're beautiful on the outside. I want you to know that I thank God every day For this precious woman that he sent me That'd 
Russ Stallings, ladies and gentlemen. And before my three amigos go, I'd like to uh, ask Russ. Russ, uh, who are your incredible band members, you always say, that make this happen for you as well, especially the one that's in the Country Hall of Fame? Could you tell me that and lighten us again? And then Kerry, Kimbo and Charlie. Oh, yeah, man. That that group of musicians playing uh, there, uh, uh, they call them Nashville Cats. That's... Mm. Uh, Buddy Hyatt, he used to play with, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, Toto, uh, the, the 80s group Toto. Uh, you got uh, Brent Mason there on guitar. I know you heard that guitar work. Uh, you know, you got uh, uh, Joel Key. You got, uh, gosh, uh, names are escaping me at the moment, but um, the, the on the A team there in Nashville, so you know you can look them up, but they're they're just top notch and they they make an old uh, a silk purse out of a sow's ear like me. But those guys were just top notch and they just they just sound awesome. So uh, they're all welcome. You tell them I don't know if they would even entertain it, but you know they're welcome to make this show their, their home as well, Russ. Anytime. Now let's go on with the three amigos: Kerry, Kimbo, and Charlie. And Charlie, you're also the next guest. Charlie, who's been up on stage with Tom Petty. Uh, yes, him. So, Kerry, Kimbo, and Charlie, please. Russ, I mean, beautiful is the song. Very, very memorable lyrics. You did a great job. I absolutely love country, and I love the song. Well done. I just, I, I just love it. Thank you. Well said, well said, Mr. Kimbo. Well, again, uh, like she said, the, the vocals were fantastic. He really set um, the stage for what he was going to talk about. I mean, when he was talking about the porch, first sips of coffee, I mean, a little mist on, you know, on the yard. I mean, that's fantastic. But the idea that the message is about commitment and love uh, for that special someone in your life and, um, you know, how that you stand by them, they stand by you. Very descriptive. Um, you know, you go, you find somebody who's going to stand behind you and have your back. I mean, that's everything. So very well done. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Appreciate the music and the, and the lyrics especially. Well said, well said. Do you know what you just said there, Kimbo? See if even you know that one person's got faith in you, you can do anything. And I know that firsthand, all right? So sorry for butting in there. Mr. Souza. That's okay. Going? Hey, listen, I love the harmony and it's an Nashville sound, man. Really classy sound. The guitars are really blending nice, and uh, you're you're giving the message out very clear. It's nice, man. Love it. Well said. Well said. Well said, Mr. Rust Allen's. You all know the drill. Uh, that you just plug your website. Or how does anyone contact you that that makes you this in the future, Russ? Yeah, you can you can find me. You know all over the place. Uh, Rust Allen's R U S S. Uh, and I'm on, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, anywhere you can Spotify, you know, uh, Apple Music, anywhere you can <laughs> Google, Google me. I'm out there. Honestly, you're absolutely brilliant. Honestly, Russ Stalin's. Till the next time. Thanks. Yes. So, 
from Nashville over to Florida. He's not just a, a commentator, judge or whatever. You know, I need to get a name for the my three amigos. Charlie Sosa, introduce yourself as an artist and what's the story behind yourself and uh, the song In the Gulf of Mexico? I'm sorry. Mexico. Oh, well, hi there. I'm Charlie. Um, I lived in L.A. for like 28 years and I experienced the really crazy earthquake that scared the heck out of me. So I had, of course, I wrote a song about that. But, you know, to get all these feelings out, love and, you know, fear, whatever you feel and you have, you write a song and it comes out and you feel OK. So when I moved back to Florida, I lived on the beach and like the first year I was there, the the BP oil spill and I, I was so depressed about, it, you know, because I lived on the beach and I looked at the water and I go, oh, no, here comes all that oil and all the birdies and all the fishies. You know, it's like so this song came out of that feeling for me to try to heal from that. And that's what this is all about. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm so make, legend make it right. We got to make it right. I love you to bits. She's always the first one in the room. This is your third or fourth appearance now. Charlie Souza with In the Gulf of Mexico. Sit back and enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. One Thank month. you. Thank you. One month.
I saw the ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> because you, you, because you, you can't talk to yourself about being a radio host. And Greenbeard here, Mr. Steve Andrews, he's our environmental activist. He's been trying to change the world for years and he's done a good job of it. Steve Andrews, would you like, obviously you want to say something to Charlie about that song. Then Kerry, then Kimbo, then on to our next guest who are blank, blank expression. So Steve, Kerry, then Kimbo, please. Thank you, Sparky. Yeah, I, I'd love to say something about it. Charlie, you know, I, I write songs about the environment and because it's so important. And I was thinking as it was playing, like, you know, we've had a, a four change show before. And I think Sparky's got plans for a four change in future. And that's a definite contender for the playlist for a four change uh, Sparky podcast show. And, you know, I think the, the more people writing songs and the more songs like that out there, the better. And you've done a, like a brilliant job there, which is what I've said in the chat, you know, brilliant environmental protest song. So, Thanks. yeah, top Thanks. class work there. <laughs> well done, Steve. Steve, um, Steve and Mark, they've been on like two or three shows a week for the last year, basically, with me. So, um, Steve, you're probably the best talker uh, out of everybody in the full family. You should get a radio show, then you can review everybody because your, your reviews are great. But let's go. Kerry, then Kimbo, then our next guest are the blank expression. Yeah, I mean, I agree with um, what Steve was saying. You know, you great positive uh, message going on, great way of raising more, aw more awareness, a great funky groove going on, and I love the bass. Really, really <laughs> well done production. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well said, well said, well said, Mr. Kimball Whitebeard. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the fact that it was had some funk involved was great. I love that. Um, unfortunately, the message is, you know, about destruction from, from man. Um, and not only does the oil spill affect the ocean and, and the beach and those sea creatures, but also it washes inland and you've got all of that wetland pollution too. So it, it destroyed so much. Um, I was living in Texas at the time and I can remember going down to Galveston and it was just, it, the oil had spread all over there. I uh, mean, it was horrible. And, and you know, uh, you step on a glob of oil, it's on there for the rest of your life. But um, yeah, it, it was horrible. It destroyed lives. It destroyed businesses because nobody's going to the beach, you know. But, I was uh, thinking of moving to Mars. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, very, <laughs> hey, very well give you, done. Give you Elon Musk a shout. Um, he's looking for some volunteers. But, uh, <laughs> you don't, you don't get to come back, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy space. I'll say, Kimball. Charlie, how does anyone find you, brother? Um, just plug your website. Oh well, right. you know, I've got, uh, I've got a new show. I'm over the moon about. It's a radio show on ninety six point seven FM, RadioStPete.com. Now I'm on there. I'm on there every Tuesdays at four. You know, but I play a lot of the you know the area's artists. Um, not only that, everything is on my website, charliesouza.com. Hey, Charlie, you're a legend, man. You should make a top talent family uh, like show every now and again because there's hundreds of world class artists in this music family. Um, Charlie Souza, until the next time, love you, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you so for letting me be here. Oh, dude, I, 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 Tom love Petty's, you, Rosita. If, if, if Tom Petty's too busy and uh, you've got nothing else to do, you can hang about with me any day. Of course, bro. it's on stage, Tom Petty. Uh, well, could, actually, uh, to, to, to say one more thing, I'm, uh, I've been invited up to uh, Gainesville on the uh, Tom Petty birthday. They're having a celebration and uh, the uh, wow. Sirius XM is going to be there in Gainesville on October 20th. And I'll be there telling stories about the about the time I spent in the studio with Tom. Anyway. Hey, honestly, Charlie, love you too, Bats man. Legend, honestly. Charlie uh, Sosa, one the only. <laughs> Thank you. From Florida over to the, the UK. Um, they've actually joined the music family before they've been on the show. Not many people do that. Absolute hats off to you guys. Blank expression. Could you introduce yourselves? Hardy, I know you, but uh, who's the other two? And uh Tell us a bit about yourself and the the tribute song, New World. How you doing? You're right. 
hopefully you can hear us because uh, we we've can. actually you can yeah because we changed position now we were over there now we come over here and now we're there so yeah so um yeah my yeah. name's matty i'm the uh the vocalist and bassist and i'm the the newest and freshest member in both age and looks and everything obviously yeah, he's got a point yeah <laughs> i'm not that fresh to and we got uh obviously you know clarky you got yeah. you over here on the drums yeah, drum drummer. yeah and it's great to be i just want to say as well that you know all the all the songs we've heard so far have been incredible so well done guys we're and worried we have to confess <laughs> yeah yeah Holy man that was so funky Funky. Yeah, I love, I love funk. Yeah, that was seriously that was funky. So that was cool. great. Um, so yeah, a little bit about the band. So uh, blank expression. Yeah, I mean, as I say, I'm the newest member, so I'm probably not the best one to talk about it, really. But you know, I've been around since the '80s, pretty much. '81, '81, '81, '79, '80. Well, 1980, really, when we first got together. When yeah. we were 16. So who produced the first demo we did in, or you did in '81, '82? Well, we were very lucky because um, we got Phil Collins, Genesis. We went round to his house. And uh, spent the day there, and he produced three songs of ours. Which one of the songs you're going to listen to is uh, Blank Expression, the, mm. A New World. Yeah, and yeah, so uh, mm. we went there. And then six months later, we went to play with the Jam and back the Jam at a special guest at uh, Bristol Academy in 1982. Hey, so, basically, you know, yeah. do you know when you mentioned Phil Collins, his son Simon Collins joined our music family, but he's a very, very private man, he doesn't trust anybody, so I've never oh, managed really? to speak to him yet, you have to speak to his manager and all that stuff, but it's a small oh, world. Man. So, who is Chris Try, and why do you tribute the song New World to him, because that's the song we're featuring today? Yeah, so Chris, I mean, um, yeah, very unfortunate situation. I mean, Ian, do you want to yeah, yeah. explain? Yeah, Chris was the original singer-songwriter. I've been there since um, since the beginning. Um, lovely fella, only 58 years of, uh, years of age. Was a keen jogger. He was out one morning in February on his usual jog. He had to step out into the road to avoid a pedestrian walking by and got hit by an oncoming car. All right. Um, he, he survived, I think, four or five weeks in a coma in hospital and then passed away in early April. Mm. So he was a lovely man and uh, and that and that this is the tribute to him because um it was uh well it was his band really you know um so we're just carrying on the carrying the torch mm. lucky to have found Matty to replace him on the vocals. Mm. Yeah I mean what's been nice is being able to take what he kind of built mm. but also apply a bit of my you know sort of you know bring some something slightly fresh to it as well. But also keep the ethos of what he bought originally, you know. So I've got my vocals on it. I'm playing the bass, but it's still a lovely tribute to him. So that's what's really nice about it, you know. Hey, absolutely. Do you know what you should do? You should get new world tattooed in your arms in respect of the boy. This is <laughs> amazing, idea. ladies and they gentlemen. Got enough, they've got enough tattoos. I'm the only one who hasn't got tattoos. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I might get a blank expression one I'm on my arm you. at some point. I know you never know. Yeah. Th but, this uh... is Blank Expressions debut, and we're bringing them on to feature all the tracks, past, present, and future. And the more you've got, the more you need to come on the show. So sit back. The debut, Blank Expression, with the song New World. Rest in peace, Chris Try. Yeah. Yes. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Bye.
So, wunderbar, as they say, over in Germany. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. World class, man. Just fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, you know, you know, Kerry, Kimbo, Charlie, what was your thoughts? Radio personality, never mind what I've got to say. Oh, I was just bopping away there to it. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. Great driving tune. Great. I love the vocals and that guitar intro. It was cool. Well done, guys. It was really, really good. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Well said, well said. Kimbo? Well, I gotta say, I love the uh, the beginning, the introspective guitar. I mean, was just out of sight. I love that. Uh, but then it sets the, the, really the stage for the rest of the song. I mean, once, once the power chords kick in, it becomes a fight song. I mean, it really does. Mm -hmm. um, and all I could say is like, it's an exclamation point uh, on the lyrics. Um, and it makes it made me want to go. Hey, let's go, let's go. Come on, let's <laughs> let's let's take the world down and uh, you know reform it or something. But you know, yeah, yeah. Right? So it was kicking. I yeah, good stuff, man. Thank you so much. Well said, yeah, right. yeah. well said, well said. Uh, yes, it was, it, it was very powerful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sparky. No, it's me. Yeah. I was bad. I, I was just going to say, Shadow Smile, you're up next, just so that he knows that was all. Charlie, on you go. Sorry about that. Well, no, it's okay. It's a strong song, man. Um, it's very meaningful, too. Uh, I can relate to losing a guitar player, so it's a great song. Loved it. Thank Read you, Blake. Blake. Read when he was 17. <laughs> he was 17, year old, 17 years old when he wrote that song. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just wanted to say one other thing as well, because uh, obviously there's only three of us here, because Rich, the other guitarist, couldn't uh, couldn't make it tonight, so that's why we were uh, holding the fault. But, yeah. you know, he's here, uh, well, he's here in spirit. He's here in spirit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, that's it. You know, usually um, it's only one member of the band that comes, and their other bandmates <laughs> like, I'm not going on a silly podcast, so respect to the three of you for coming, you know. Uh, how oh, did you no, find you guys? How did you find you? You don't know the job now. Website or... Blank expression is quite a unique name. It's easy to find these, but do you have a website or anything, lads? Uh, yeah, it's a Wix site, uh, Blank Expression Wix, but, I mean, we can put it in the comments or whatever, if that's all right on the... Yeah, of course. Um, um, our manager can send it across. We, we, we just play instruments, basically, and, <laughs> and, and jump about on stage. And that's yeah, about yeah. it. So. Hey, yeah. I need to get you guys on a couple of shows rapid, so you take your pick the same time next week, come on another show. Until the next yeah. time, Blank Love Expression... It. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Honestly. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Nice Thank you. So, all the way from the UK over to the UK, represented by Connor. Connor, who are Shadow Smile as a band? And what's the story behind the song? Hellbound Heart. Yeah, I feel like things are, are going to take a dark turn now. Um, because everyone's been quite upbeat and quite uh, quite quite positive. Hey, it's not called the diverse show for nothing. <laughs> honestly. I love that last song though, guys. That was that was amazing. Really enjoyed that. Um yeah, so Shadow Smile, are, we're a metal band. Um, we're based in the UK. Um, we have a lot of um, influence from horror movies and things like that. So uh, there's a lot of dark imagery going on. 
This song, Hellbound Heart, is uh, taken from our new album, which just came out, which we crowdfunded um, and got done at a place called Treehouse Studio up in Derbyshire. And uh, yeah, this this song's based on a uh, Clive Barker novella called The Hellbound Heart, which was later adapted into the film Hellraiser, which some people may have seen. Oh, cool. uh, so it's all about the um, the concepts of lust and how it kind of drives us and becomes insatiable and very difficult to resist. So uh, it, it just makes me sound a little bit pervious to say that. But... Hey, not, not at all. You know, <laughs> so I, I've been looking forward to getting you on this show for a while. I've been talking to you for ages. Shadows, my ladies and gentlemen, with their song Hellbound Heart. It's metal, it's a diverse show. You're coming on the heavy metal show, absolutely guaranteed with this song. Sit back and enjoy Max Story, you're next, because I thought we were doing the normal protocol and you'd be commenting, but we've now got three DJs for Shadow, Smile, Hell, Doubt and Heart. Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely dynamite. Yeah. Well, I can see Ch Charlie, you're the third guest. You have to wait. Ladies first. Kerry, Kimbo, Charlie, what you've got to say about that masterclass. Connor, amazing. Honestly, what a great Thank you band. so much. Thank you. Kerry, Kimbo. I mean, yeah, I know you mentioned that you think it was going to be a bit of a dark downturn. Dark, but you've got a really crisp sound going on there. And I, I love the video and your vocals really good. And you've got a really catchy chorus. Song's going to really do well. Thank you so much. Hey, abs absolutely. And if you think that's dark route, do you see who's coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, if this is a week? 
clear for you here. Kimbo, then Charlie Sosa. Well, I love metal in all its forms. I mean, frankly, that was a good headbanger. Um, I, I love the pseudo screaming growls, and you had a you had one scream in there that was was probably at least 10, 12 seconds, which I'm pretty impressed with. So very nice. And and you, then it came down, you used a little keyboard to kind of bridge things. And I, I just thought it was very excellent. So, you know, hey, dark has a place in the world too. You know, after the sun goes down, it's dark. So whatever, you know, <laughs> all, all genres, all good. You know, I'm definitely putting that on my playlist. So oh, thank you very I much, agree man. with you, Kimball. Well said, White Beard. Do you know something before you go, Charlie? See, um, a lot of people that like more chill music, they think that, they maybe think, oh, that's too, if you want to actually sit back and listen to the musicianship and heavy metal music, dream on, most of you lazy musicians, sit and tap in four chords. These guys are the, the baddest people on the planet, you know. Sorry, uh, Charlie, then Mr. Red Beard, he's texting me i want to say something i want to say something so you're getting four comments uh charlie then redbeard okay well connor you know you rock you know that oh thank you you know much, you rock <laughs> so you know it's very powerful stuff man you know it's strong you know that and you got that that young rock thing going that you know don't stop just do it i mean you know you rock Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Captain Redbeard, I know that this is your right up your alley there, dude. What's your thoughts before we get to your section? Yeah, yeah. I've I've, I've been in a few metal bands in the time, and, and it's one of them things, you know. And I, I understand why you said what you said when you, you introduced your song, and the fact that heavy metal was like the black sheep of music business. I think a little bit still, and people, think, mm, you know, it's going to be too heavy for people. But you know. It was expertly played. I love the fact it's never boring. It was that song was never boring. There's always something to keep you interested. And I, I, I try and keep one eye on the video. I also try and just keep both ears on the music. Um, and the video was great, but the music was great as well. And I love the way your vocals go. I'm assuming you do all the vocals. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, you to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you do that switch from melodic vocal to a more aggressive vocal. And uh, the song, you know, at the end of the day, the song's got to keep people entertained. You know, not just bludgeon them into submission. And um, you you pulled it off. It's a great song, great melodies. You've got everything in there. You've got melodies, you've got the dark side, and I love the dark side myself. So, yeah, excellent. I love it. I definitely want to check out more of your stuff. I've left a nice comment on your YouTube channel, too. Hey, thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Redbeard. Captain Redbeard, what happened to you being a radio host for Radio Radio? Take that up. I can teach you to make a radio show in 10 minutes, dude. It's really easy and you've got access to, you know, you really should do that as well. Uh, Connor, how does anyone find you? And just so you know, the next two guests, Delphi Ravens, then Luke Lucas. Uh, so just to let you know. Uh, Connor, how does anyone find Shadow Smile? Well, thank you, everyone, for the kind words. Really appreciate that. Um, we are on all major streaming services. Just search Shadow Smile. We're on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, our, our username is usually Shadow Smile Music. Uh, or you can go to shadowsmile.world, which is our website. So, uh, yeah, thank hey, you for yeah. having me as well. Fantastic. Hope to see you back here again. Connor uh, with his band, Shadow Smile. One love. Absolutely great, man. So, from the UK, back over to the UK again. Captain Redbeard, this is his show. I work for him. He's the G behind this Top Talent Promotions music family. Mark Story, introduce yourself and tell us the story behind your song, The Devil's in the Detail. Okay, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Story. Um, and I sort of got a bit bored with being let down by musicians that were quite so dedicated. So I decided to do everything myself. So everything you see in here, I did. I did the video, I did the music, I wrote the song, lyrics, produced it, mixed it. So uh, the, the Devils in the Detail is uh, it's an observational song about people, people you meet in the world, in your life. And um, sometimes they're not quite what you think they're going to be. So it's, it's kind of lists the different people in the song. Uh, throughout the song, the kind of people you meet in, in, throughout your life and the way they come across to you and whether they've got a hidden agenda. Um, I'm currently five tracks into the album. Obviously, I'm doing everything myself, so it takes a while. It would have been seven, but I've decided not to put any covers on there. I'm going to do all originals um, for two reasons. One, I've got plenty of originals, and, and B, I don't want to pay anyone else <laughs> for the use of their music. 
So all my covers will stay on YouTube. But anyway, Devil's in the Detail. I hope you like it. It's a little bit mid-paced for uh, like the stuff. Dude, like so you're absolutely world-class. I mean, he even does all the video stuff himself. My mum loves him to bits. She keeps saying, ask Redbeard to come up to Scotland and he can stay at our house when he's playing gigs. And I'm like, we'll get him a couple of gigs then. Mark Story with one of his tracks, The Devil's in the Detail. The man's fantastic. Alice Cooper, eat your heart out. My brother, Redbeard. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Dan Mark Red Beard story, ladies and gentlemen. And we could sit through that other 20 seconds there and he mentions lots of people, including myself in his video. Love you, Mark. Honestly, David, can't say enough good things about you. I wish my mum wasn't so shy. I'm gonna ask her, hey mum, come on, tell Mark how much you love her. Cause uh, love him because she's always here, but she's shy. Kerry, Kimbo, then Charlie. Oh wow, Mark. I got absolutely lost in those lyrics. Very, very relatable. I could even you know, even sense the feeling of that you've been hurt in life. And 
I just love those little guitarists and the harmonica. Wicked. Absolutely great track. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Appreciate it. Okay. Kembo then, Charlie. Very impressive as always, Mark. Thank you very much. I, I, I got to say the dance between tooting on the harp and the guitar was superb. I mean, it was just superb. Um, love the whole thing. I'll tell you what, you inspired me last night because I was listening to some of your stuff to go ahead and cover a couple of Dr. John tunes myself. You inspired me to that, all right? So not a lot of things impressed me, but you did enough for me. So that was great. Um, I, I just love your music, man. I, I love the blues and you pull it off. And I need you to let me know where you got that gas can guitar. Because I have a, <laughs> yeah, you it know, I mean, I, I have a couple resonators and things, but that thing really growls. It growls. That, that was, yeah, that let was me know. Picture. Let me know online, all right? Okay, hey, Mark. Nice. Hey, Mark, yeah. uh, was that a bass you were playing, man? Headless, yeah, fret, uh, headless oh. bass, yeah. Yeah, well, then you got my vote. Um, listen, <laughs> that, was, uh, the, that harp playing, man, I, I want to hear the harp again, okay? Can, can I hear that again there, Sparky? Can you play that harp part? No, I'm just kidding. It was really good, and you know what? <laughs> I, now that I'm getting to know you, Mark, I promise you, I'll never piss in your lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Charlie. Well said, Charlie. In there, man. Um, <laughs> Mr. Redbeard, my mum's been, uh, she's probably the wee glassy way. She's like, oh, no, I'm in my pyjamas. I'm not coming on the telly. But she loves you to bits. Uh, Papa B, you're up next. Do you want to take my mum's place? What was your thoughts on that marvellous track? Well, I'll load up your song, dude. Yeah, that was great. I, I like the blues as well. And that kind of blues rock combination. Yeah, the the gas can that I mean, that just I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so that was fantastic. But yeah, the, the harp in there was really, really clever and really well done. So it was a great, great track, Mark. Really great. Yeah, that's that's pretty. It's a pretty awesome guitar. It's a bohemian guitar. It's, it's made by a company called Bohemian. And wow. um, uh, I'll, I'll, I won't go into too much detail, but yeah, it's got a pretty amazing sound. It's uh, it's it a really bit weird does. to play because being square, it, you can't really put it on your lap. You know? Yeah, it doesn't but, look um, comfortable, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> but it still, it sounds it sounded great. Yeah, that yeah, special, you get you. four compliments, you greedy bugger. And I say, I know, right? Uh, Mark <laughs> Redbeard's story, love you to bits, dude. Till the next time. Thank you very much. I'll catch right Thank back. You, Thank you, uh, from London over to Oregon, uh, this shows his as well. It's his third or fourth time here, Papa B. Introduce the Delphi Ravens. Who are these as artists? And what's the story behind your song? How wrong you were? Yeah, this is, uh, we've been around since uh, about 20, early 2020. I started the band. I founded the band. And uh I play the bass in the band, but I write all the music, um, but not all the lyrics. So uh, this song actually was not our first song, but it was the first song we released in 21. And uh, the lyrics are by the vocalist, Kira. Uh, and you'll definitely hear her voice in this. Uh, she's a great singer. So uh, we both write lyrics. Um, she came to me with this lyric and I liked it. And she had an idea for the vocal. And so I wrote all the music around it. And then we went to the studio and recorded it with some other songs. And it was the first song we actually released in 21. We've released, uh, I think, 14 more since then. So, and working on some new stuff. So anyway, it's uh, it's been a great journey. Um, she's a great um, artist in her own right. So, um, but, so we co-write probably, I'd say 80% of the songs together. And Delphi Ravens is, uh, you know, basically alternative rock. And uh, we have some different pieces and different styles and, uh, Mark's heard, you've heard a couple of different things we did Sparky but um but in any case uh, this song is really uh uh I think uh, Indie Band Guru reviews reviewed this song and said it was a perfect f you to a former lover <laughs> that was their description of it so that's kind of the theme of this song is it's kind of a you know screw you um you know to a former former lover uh and Kira wrote the lyrics so you can imagine it's probably somebody that she was with so in any case <laughs> that's what hey, it's about your your band's amazing Delphi Ravens he goes by the name Papa B he's my friend on Facebook Stephen Andre Burgess so you've got a lot of yeah. allies he's the music's great sit back and enjoy this ladies and gentlemen 
How Wrong You Were by Delphi Ravens. Yeah, yeah. Another amazing track. Boom. Be that is just absolutely brilliant, dude. Uh, I don't, I'm speechless. See, you should bring the rest of your band on these shows as well. Let them know how, <laughs> in, my, in my opinion, I, it's the best way to spend time ever sitting with other musicians and hearing all the stories behind the songs. So I'm getting emotional about this. Let's go. My three judges here, uh, <laughs> Kerry, Kimbo, and Charlie. I'm not calling these judges, I need a better name than that, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> It's very well written and well produced. Great production. A very relatable lyrics. I wonder how she, who she's really, you know, writing about in that song, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really good job. And I certainly would play it on my show. Cool. Hey, honestly, um, we're, we're on to something very special here. I, I, honestly, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. Kimbo, then Charlie. Yeah. Well, uh <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, you know, uh, you might sound, this might sound weird to you, but uh, 
other than most of Neil Young's songs, Rockin' in the Free World, came to mind. That mm -hmm. and a morph of the Smithereens, if you know who the Smithereens are. I do. Great yeah. American band. Um, that's the music to me. And, and the beat, just that, just the driving beat, the guitar, I mean, just fantastic. And her vocals, they're smooth but strong. So it makes like a nice casserole in there uh, uh, that's very tasty. Very good. Oh, and uh, cool. I, Thank I you. think it was I think it was excellent, man. I really do. Good. Thank strong you. Stuff. Very strong. Uh, the vocalist, man, she's strong. And the music has got some power to it. I really enjoyed that tune. And uh, I need to hear more. Where can we find you? Uh, you can actually find us uh, a lot of places. So um, we're on all the streaming services. Um, you know, most people check us out on Spotify because everything's there. All of our Delphi tracks. Delphi Ravens? Del I'm just under Delphi Ravens. You can also find okay. our website there. Uh, we've okay. got a big following on uh, SoundCloud. We've got a big, big following on uh, Instagram. Uh, fair amount of people on Facebook and YouTube as well. So we don't do a lot of videos. So this was actually, to me, a kind of a funky video, but... It was our very first video, so we didn't uh, have a lot of production uh, money to put into it. So, but in any case, um, yeah, it's we've been very, very fortunate. So, uh, but you can find us a lot of places. We've we've actually, I think we've won eight songwriting awards in the last two years. So, and it oh, wasn't for great, the song; it's for other songs you haven't heard. So, um, so it's 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 really cool. Yet, yet we've not heard them yet. Well said, Papa. Be honestly. You're fantastic, the, the Delph, Delphi Ravens. Sorry, I always say Delphi, I'm Scottish, I say silly things. That's okay. Until next time, <laughs> thank you so much. From Oregon, thank back you. over to the UK. It's about a UK show tonight uh, over in London. Look, Lucas, um, you know the drill, brother, by now. It's a debut in the show, though. Who um, are you as an artist, Look, Lucas? What's the story behind your song, Tears and Time? So, um, I, I guess I started off producing and as an audio engineer for other people that was what I studied ended up being my job and just gradually over the years messing about with writing started making and releasing my own stuff um ironically this song is actually the only song the first song that I've not actually written it was written by one of my best friends um but years ago but from the first time I heard it I I said to him I was like let oh please let me produce this song for you and he was going to be the artist but never did anything with it and i said to him one day i was like look are you ever gonna do anything with it he was like honestly man probably not i was like can i do it then <laughs> and he was like yeah go ahead it's all yours so um that was about five years ago and i've just been chipping away working on it since because it's it's like a because it's not my song it's his song well the lyrics at least um it's a really personal one and they felt like a lot of weight because as you'll hear my stuff is as a a lot of production there and his was just an acoustic version so i kind of wanted to do it justice without um yeah without taking away the heart of it but i love it um it's all produced by myself i got my mate who plays drums on it jack geary he's he does an amazing job um but then pretty much everything else was just from the bedroom desk hey look it's a beautiful track man honestly sit back and enjoy this wonderful track tears and time by luke lucas Thanks for coming on the show, Luke. I've been looking forward to this as well. One love.
You know, that is just very, very special, man. Let's go the three three amigos, Kerry, Kimbo, Charlie. Then our next guest, Steve Andrews, you're up next. It's a great um, driving song. And I had, I kept getting this like really um, ambient feel to it, you know, haunting melody. And I could really feel those lyrics. Great job. I'm really, really pleased you did something with it. Thanks. Well said, well said, Kimbo. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I don't know if it's just me, but when you're sitting in a chair, uh, whether on your porch or in your house, and you zero in with your eyes on a spot on the wall or something you're looking at, and you get totally lost in thought, okay, that's the vibe I got, all right? And I, and I love that because you're just totally relaxed, and you're zeroing in on something you're thinking about, and that's what I really like about the song, the, the ambience of the music just laid a total frame really around the vocals that, that were very poignant and important. Um, but I, I, I thought it was really great. I, it's one of those songs that you can get lost in. Okay, seriously. So it's made, it's made for the it's made for a movie and like some kind of like spacey bit of a movie or some kind of track lost or something. I swear whoever's vocals is, that was at the end, but a brilliant voice. Mr. Souza, Charlie. Oh, you're muted there, brother. Sorry, you're muted. Unmute yourself there, my man. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, Charlie, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. I don't know what's if you can see your screen, it went out the way before. Greenbeard, you're up next. Would you like to say something while Charlie's unmuting himself? Greenbeard, what was your thoughts on that? I would, uh, Luke. I was really impressed with that. And I, I suppose because it's the music business, I try to place things in genres, you know, and you get, uh, you get asked to place things in genres, but I couldn't place it in a genre. I didn't know what it was. But you know what, that really, really didn't matter because it was just a beautiful piece and it was so well produced. 
And I think, like like Kerry said, there was a kind of a haunting quality to it. You know, the, the way that the the vocals were kind of mixed, like low in the mix, but still very much there. So you were listening, and it was kind of very much something you were absorbing. And it was it was just a pretty amazing work, you know, all told. Thanks. I agree, Steve. Um, it had that flow where you wanted to like relax, think about one thing, like Kimbo said, and uh, or actually, the songwriter said that too. Uh, it just lays you back and gives you a chance to uh, not think about much because of the music. It's so nice and uh, relaxing. Appreciate it. Wasn't it just on it? Well said, everyone. Thanks, man. Look, you're brilliant, man. Come and make us place your home. How does everyone find you, Luke? Your website? Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram. Luke, uh, this is Luke Lucas. Um, uh, I'm, uh, Twitter and Facebook have kind of slipped into the dust and will never be never be accessed but instagram i'm i'm fairly active on and also uh any streaming platform so spotify itunes whatever you use you can find me in luke lucas hey man hopefully it's a positive many for you bro look lucas till the next time cheers so from london over to portugal you've seen much of white beard tonight you've you've seen red beard been featured now it's time for green beard Steve Andrews, could you introduce yourself as an artist? And I'll be honest, you've sent me this song and I've never heard it. What's the story behind Harvest Home? And this man's got the record for being on the show the most. He's got about 20 odd appearances. Some of his songs he's featured two or three times. This one, I've never heard of it, Steve. What's the story behind Harvest Home? But introduce yourself first, thank you. Okay, I, I'm Steve Andrews, originally from Cardiff in Wales, now living in Portugal. I'm also known as the Bard of Ely, Ely in Cardiff, not Ely, Cambridge. Um, I'm also known for having a green beard, which you can see. Uh, I think that's probably enough about me. This song has actually a long story, so I'll try and keep it short because the song is actually quite long as well. Um, I got to thinking about, you know, having this song today because I don't know how many of you are aware, but this is actually the Autumn Equinox. Um, and which is also known as the Second Harvest Festival. So for people who follow the seasonal calendar, you know, the Druids and witches and pagan peoples who follow this, this is a really important day. And for people in olden times, this was very important because this was the second harvest. This was the time, you know, that you, you got in all of your, your nuts and your grain and your fruit and whatever that you would have to maybe store for the rest of the, the colder, darker period. So this was an important, important, important time. And it is also the, the equinox, which is the, the same length of day and night. And the other one is in spring. And funnily enough, funnily enough, I happen to be born on the vernal equinox. So I suppose I, I get to know a little bit about these things. But getting back to the actual song, the song started life as a poem, as many of my, of my songs do. And it was published in a goth fanzine. And I can't remember the name of the fanzine right now, which is, you know, uh, so I hope Alan Craw, who edited it, will forgive me for, the, for that if he uh, happens to be listening. But it was in this goth fanzine and somebody said to me, Steve, you know, that, that I think that would make a good song. Could you put maybe put a tune to it? So I said, yeah, I'll have a go at that. And so it became a song. And then what happened to it then was it, so it's been in, in several incarnations. The first version of it was produced by... Nathaniel Shelley, and I, I, I warn you, this is going to be long. Nathaniel Shelley, Nat Shelley, is the son of Burke of the late Burke Shelley. Burke Shelley was the bass player in the legendary Budgie, the the heavy rock band. Anyway, so Nat Shelley did his production of the song, and it was kind of a little bit psychedelic, a bit a bit kind of John Lennon sound to it. And anyway, that was that, and that ended up actually on uh, a real EP on cry records from wales so that that was fine but what happened a few years ago i started working with jace lewis who is a really famous musician in his own right and producer and i said jace i want to do some of my old songs but give them a new spin and this is like an old song so he's doing his new spin he's doing his new production for harvest home and so this is the jace lewis 
production of Harvest Home, a song that's been out once before with another producer, a song that started life as a poem. It's something to do with, with the harvest. It's to do with, and it, it tries to take you around the year. So I think that's enough about the song. Sparky, play the song. Thank you. you. Got it, Steve, you're not just a wonderful artist and a great friend. You're an absolute stud muffin. See if he's all Google Steve Andrews, Britain's Got Talent. You'll see him get every single female member of the crowd up on stage, and I'm not kidding you. The man's a legend. Love you, Steve. Harvest <laughs> home by the Bard of Eli, Steve Andrews. Oh. 
between time When the daffodils had grown With the warmth of summer sunshine Bring my harvest home From the time of summer solstice Bring my harvest home Bring my harvest Bring my harvest home Bring my harvest home Bring my Absolutely beautiful, Steve. Um, yeah, I was sitting back there just taking that in because it was the first time. Um, I don't know what's happened to Charlie. I think his phone's died or something. Let's go, Kerry, Timbo. Then our next guest, Denny, you could say something as well here. We'll go three, what we've been doing. Kerry, Steve, Kimbo, then Denny. Steve, you know, I, I love your music. You know, that builds to a really, really beautiful and haunting melody. And it's just sticks in your mind and it's another great driving song to to be listening to make sure you send it to me buddy oh thank you so much kerry and thank you for playing me on your show today and um, my pleasure flying through a rainbow a real love and communication to to uh, my songs that you know I, I know a lot of people like so i really appreciated that and also Thank you to Sparky for what you just said. And I, I'm glad that you really liked the song, which you hadn't even heard. So uh, that was hey, great. Dude, we don't need to vet your music, you know. Anyways. Papa B's back, so is Charlie. So yep. uh, <laughs> something he, happened. <laughs> I don't know. Two or three people had to leave there in, in a row there. Kimbo, uh, then Charlie will stick to our, our three amigos here if Charlie's back in time. Kimbo, what was your thoughts here, dude? Yeah, well, you know, it took me back to uh, places I've been. Um, I know on the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland, uh, we found standing stones. And just to go there and touch them and feel them and see them, uh, I mean, that's what this song gave me the vibe of, the feeling of, the feeling of, you know, ancient ritual, okay, ancient religion. Um, and with, with the song, the, the soft chanting in the background kind of really added to that ritual situation. And it's amazing how many of the late 60s bands tied into this very sound. I mean, I think of Traffic, you know, I think of Canned Heat, some of their real early stuff. It was very similar. And, um, you know, even some Jethro Tull, Songs from the Wood. I mean, it, excellent stuff. So I, I was ter perfectly happy with it. You got a little bit of Eastern influence in there, too. So really nice. Plus, you blew away the vocals, bro. <laughs> well, Th thank you so much, Kimbo. And, and yeah, you know, like the, the standing stones, are, I mean, that's why I mentioned like Stonehenge in there. I, I've been very much associated with standing stones, Avebury and Stonehenge, and some stones near where I lived in Cardiff, the, the Tinkins Wood Burial Chamber, where I was, where I happened to be actually knighted by King Arthur Pendragon, uh, who is the Druid leader, who I may have mentioned before. But anyway, I haven't got time to talk about King Arthur right now. So uh, but yeah, yeah, you know, I, I have been, you know, very much um, involved in, in in that that world. So yeah, that, that probably reflects it. And and what you just said about about the bands, yeah, sure. I'm I'm just thinking another one like Led Zeppelin. You know, they were a band with with that kind of influence. So yeah, much appreciated. I, I had no idea you've been knighted. Holy shit. Uh, Charlie's struggling to come back in. He's coming back in a second. Denny, do you want me to take Charlie's uh, review space while I load up your song, Denny Von Braun? Yeah, um, yeah, that's my new favorite from Steve, from what I've heard for sure. It was a very beautiful song. And uh, 
the producer that you're working with uh, did some really cool things to give it some neat character, uh, like repeating the same vocal line and, and, you know, giving it that robotic sound, but it kind of like just super worked with how the, the song was sounding. So I really enjoyed it a lot. So, and the, of course it comes from a great foundation from the poem, right? So it's just, yeah, it, uh, it hit, I liked it. Oh, thank you, Danny. You know, I really appreciate that. And I was just thinking then that I remember, you know, when Jace was actually still working on it, his father, who I know, you know, Charlie Lewis came in the studio and, and Jace was saying, Dad, listen to this. And, and his dad was listening to this and he could, you know, pick up on how good, you know, the whole the sound was going, you know, with what Jace had been doing to it. With as you as you saw, like the the repetitive vocal lines and 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 the chanting that that Kimbo could picked up on, and yeah, that that was all you know very much intentional. A lot of work for Jace, and uh, I'm really glad you liked it. Hey, Steve, you're a legend, man. Watch this. I, I can I can read the future. Steve's going to hold up a bit of paper that says Steve Andrews dot info on it. Steve, how does anyone <laughs> get hold of you, bro? I, I'm seventy. <laughs> <laughs> a great answer. Steve, Seven, I'm still, I'm still still rocking man's a legend. Love him. Hey, Steve, till the next time. Thank you very much. And Charlie, thank welcome you, back, you. brother. Welcome back, thank Charlie. You. I don't know if you heard any Steve song there. Uh, I think you missed it. But um, we'll let you off this time. Derry, take your place. Right, so from Portugal over to Canada, um, he's got links to New York as well. Derry Von Braun, introduce yourself as an artist. Uh, who are you as an artist? What's the story behind your song, Rocks? Yeah, I'm uh, Denny Von Braun. I'm an Indigenous artist from Edmonton, Canada, so the uh, west side of Canada. Uh, and uh, Rocks is, uh, unfortunately, I had some kind of down experiences in the music industry with some venues and some promoters and and things. And uh, I was feeling down and I feel like uh, this song just kind of poured out of me as a as a as a reminder that uh, of why I do it it's just because I really enjoy making music and stuff like that and it kind of doesn't matter about uh, what else is going on uh, and uh, just another note about me I am a, a DIY guy so everything is uh, I do everything myself this video I threw together the the production all that stuff uh, much like Mark and much like uh, some of the others here he was Lucas Lucas or Luke Lucas <laughs> but uh hey. Yeah, that's and, rocks. And this place is becoming your home now as well. I believe it's your third or fourth appearance here. You're absolutely brilliant, brother. I love you to bits. Denny Von Braun with his wonderful track, Rocks. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. So There's only two more after this. It's the two Tims, Tim Turner and Tim Hopkins. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Best show ever. Love. <laughs> Yeah. 
it's a minor pain I'm on my way to what's new again Refresh my page, reload my soul Accept the cookies and take control Untie my shoes and shake the earth loose Dislodge the pain and start again It's the only chance to make my way Honestly, Danny Von Braun, ladies and gentlemen, you're absolutely brilliant, dude. Just, I was really loving, loving that. I actually cracked a beer. I says, Kirsty, bring me a beer. And she, she brought me a beer and opened a beer during that. I loved it so much. So Kerry, Kimbo, then Charlie, back to the, the usual. Danny, I, you very, very expressive vocals. I like the Japanese vibe you've got going on there. And I love that haunting sound, you know. It's really, really well produced. Very, very catchy. Very memorable. I'd, I'd love to play it on my show. You definitely have permission to, of course. <laughs> hey, Danny Von Braun, Kerry Duke Box. Everyone, get all your social, put all your Facebook and Twitters and everything, and like, at least you start with each other. Because think of all the fans you've all got together. See if you can all let your fans see each other's stuff. You can all share your fans together. Don't be selfish, like. Most artists are rivals to other artists because, oh, I want to get yep. the gigs in my area. But you're all over the world here, so, hey, well said, honestly. Kimbo and Charlie. Well, I think most indie musicians and artists, including myself, we were, uh, you're glad to let go of that false prison or the clutches of what the music industry is most of the time today. And once you do that, you're true to yourself. And what you're going to do is end up being a better artist, musician, uh, a better lyricist, everything all around, because now you're finally free. You're not worried about the numbers so much as you're worried about the music that you want to present to somebody from your heart to theirs. And I think that makes all the difference. And, um, you know, I could see the message in the music. I really enjoyed the fact that you know, you had a melodic 80s vibe and it wasn't overpowering what the lyrics were about. And having that background was was nice that you know you, you gave us. So uh, hey man, keep keep trucking, keep uh, keep on doing it, and feeling good about what you're doing in yourself. Even if one person hears your music and you had a ton here, okay, and it made a difference in their lives, okay, I'm getting the chill. Then that's important <laughs> music, all right. Hey. So yeah, just, I'm just I'm just blathering on here, but and and ten years stuff, time. Man. In 10 years' yeah. time, myself and Kirsty and my children probably by that time, we will still be sharing this show every week somewhere. So because you featured a song here one time, I'll never stop promoting it. And I don't know where we're going to go here as a music family. Uh, Charlie, what was your thoughts here before Denny tells us how to contact him? Well, I totally agree with Kimbo. You know, this stuff is, uh, I mean, Denny, you taekwondo this tune, man. You really did great. And uh, I enjoyed it. 
around his around his kick with a karate chop, wasn't it, Charlie? I really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so Denny Von um, Braun, how does anyone find you? You've got a unique name of MD types and they'll find you, but do you have a website or anything, brother? Uh, not a special place, you know, the Instagram, the Facebook, Spotify, uh, YouTube do, uh, do fun covers on my YouTube channel. So, uh, shoot over there and check out some of that stuff. That's fun. Uh, wow. Danny Von Braun, all platforms. Danny Von Braun, till the next time, legend in the making. You know, one love. So from Canada over to Arizona, the last two guests of the evening to my finest gentlemen, the two Tims. Start off with TT, Tim Turner. Introduce yourself. Who is Tim Turner? And what's the story behind your song, Down by the Waterfront? Down by the Waterfront. Yeah, first I'd like to say to everyone, you know, it's kind of cool, this technology. We're becoming friends from all over the world. We have something in common, which is music for some reason. It drives our souls. We don't stop. We keep producing, creating. And you guys are inspiring to me, being older. I've you know, I picked up a guitar when I was around 13, 12, something like that. Dysfunctional family, alcoholic parents, messed up brothers and sisters, prison, freaking everything you could think of. And I picked up that guitar and that was my buddy. That guitar was my friend. And that's how I play it. And you guys, I think <clears throat> now, Sparky, you know, I've been on about six shows now. And this is, I think, the best. Uh, Bro, I, I, yeah. honestly, something special is happening here, and I, I, oh, you know, Steve, really is, it's getting better every week. It's and getting better. Week. Steve but, blew me away. I never heard that song, and I just absolutely loved it. Uh, Denny, I loved. I mean, I could take time to talk about each one of you, but what I'm going to do is talk about down hey. by the waterfront. Can I just jump in for two seconds, right? See, today all I've ever done is make rough copies of these. I don't know how to video edit any videos, but as soon as I find someone that wants to take the credit, we can go back over 1,150 guests to date and make a real shows TV worthy because this is live television. This is not a podcast. Yeah, a I would. Video. I would use. But yeah, this, I we could talk this about show. this all day. But tell us about down by the waterfront. Okay, down by the waterfront. I played uh, the acoustic rhythm on that. I played, uh, I think, another track with some acoustic finger picking, and then I, I used the Les Paul to play uh, sort of a, a rhythm along with the flow of it, and then I used a, uh, a Les Paul to play the lead. So I play rhythm and lead. I'm self-taught. You know, I have my limitations, but I've learned over the years to use it to my advantage in the music. Uh, I, I think my talent is putting it where it belongs, putting everything where it belongs. And I've had the opportunity to work with some, you know, I've talked about it before, Steve Kremel, uh, Grammy Award winning engineer. So, and then I worked in another studio with another good friend of mine. He's a sound engineer, Jeff Nelson. So this, this song was recorded originally with Jeff, but then I took it over to Paint the Sky Studios and finish it up with Steve. Tim Navoa is on drums. I'm playing bass. I usually don't play bass, but I can. I played bass, I played the rhythm, and I played the lead. Now here's the thing. A young songwriter from Canada sent these words to me. Normally I write them, but now I, I had a challenge of putting this guitar composition, trying to put it to these words. And what happened was, I sort of manipulated the words, redid them to my kind of thing. And I think that's why it worked. And um, it's a long song and I hope it fits in what everybody's doing here. Uh, and, you know, down by the waterfront. It's absolutely perfect, honestly, Dan. You're, you're a brilliant artist, honestly. Down by the waterfront by TT, Tim Turner. Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Fun love. <laughs> Look good 
Hey, TT. Tim Turner, ladies and gentlemen. What an amazing child it track. Um, if there's anything that I can be negative about it is see if you can make a three and a half minute version of it. I'm sure Kerry and Kimbo and, <laughs> and the folk on the radio I would say... Tried. That, I tried. I tried to shorten it. Hey, I'll let the experts uh, say something here. Like Kerry, Kimbo, then Charlie, ladies and gentlemen. But what a wonderful track, DT. Oh, wow. There was such an earthy vibe and vocals, a lovely haunting sound. And I love those guitar riffs and you got a nice little snare roll going on. It was really, really good. I really, really loved it. And I'd love to listen to it again. <laughs> Well said, oh, you're shy and all that. Don't kid on your shy. Don't kid on your shy, Tim. Uh, Kimbo. <laughs> Kimbo, then Charlie, then our next guest, TH. We need to call these. We can't kind of keep caught. You know, you need nicknames in this family. As soon as there's two of the same person, I name you. Didn't a red beard and white beard? Uh, Ch Kimbo, then Charlie? Yeah. One phrase. Uh, the return of Lou Reed. Okay? I mean, it sounded totally like a Lou Reed, you know, backtrack album. I mean, just the vocals, even, even what the, you know, even what he's talking about, Hey, the cops, uh, you know, he smiles at the cops as they go by and then he'll be back later to get paid. You know, it's uh, yeah. totally, totally Lou Reed to me. And, and that's good. I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, yeah, you could shorten it a little bit, but, and again, would Lou Reed do that? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Lou Reed would say, take a walk in the wild side. I like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I agree with you, Jimbo. Just like that. So is that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very dreamy tune, man. Uh, you know, I could uh, fly over the top of a mountain with that thing because, you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was here. Yeah, the last song made me have a beer. This one made me roll a cigarette, which is okay in some countries and not in other places. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm sorry to admit that live on camera. But um, TH, you're the next guest. What was your thoughts there? And then Tim Turner can tell. None of you have called Tim anymore. It's T, T, T and TH. I, I can't even pick Tim for one of you. So that's me. TH. Oh, we can't hear you, Tim. Big problems. We can't hear your input. We can't hear your microphone. So hopefully you can sort that. Well, Tim tells us how to contact you, Tim. What's the best way to contact you? Um, YouTube or any of these things, website? I have a, there's an Instagram and Twitter and there's Facebook and YouTube, like everybody else. I do have a personal website I had for a long time, but off the top of my head, I can't remember um, the, you know, the, what do you call it? the url url uh yeah those are the places you can contact me and if you do contact me i'll i will return that and like the other person said earlier if you subscribe or you do i i try to reply to every comment and say something personal Hey, Tim, you're absolutely fantastic. Let, let, uh, our last guest has had to re-log in. So, Steve Andrews, you say something as well. And Redbeard, because Tim's trying to log back in. He's the last guest of the evening. So, Greenbeard, Redbeard, you want to say something to Tim about that track? Yeah, I, I'd love to. Um, I could see, you know, what Akimbo was saying about, you know, Lou Reed. I, I could I could hear that in it. But, I, but what occurred to me, and it occurred to me pretty quickly when the song started, is that... I was thinking of Leonard Cohen, and Leonard Cohen was one of my all-time favorites. I absolutely love Leonard Cohen. And it, it was sounding like and the kind of pace and the, the lyrics were kind of Leonard Cohen-ish. But then the, the guitar coming in, that was not Leonard Cohen at all. That was just, that was making it very different. And, and it, was, it was a song that, for me, there was so much kind of there. The, it was a song that I would want to listen to again and again, yes. and it was it was a, a quality song, and that was the thing really that I, I, I you know I'm going back to to Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen had quality in in his work. You know he 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 was a poet and 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 a writer as well as the singer the songwriter, 
and his songs were deep. And that was what came over, I suppose, you know, in, in your song, Tim, it, it, it's a, a deep song. There was a lot there. And so, yeah, I, I was, I was really like impressed with that. And the length of it didn't matter. You know, that really didn't matter. So, Hey, as you said, Leonard Cohen, it did sound so much like Leonard Cohen, the poets are leaving on a jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again. Before Redbeard says a comment, Tim Hopkins, test your mic. No, we can't hear you, man, honestly. Take your earphones out and go loud speaker if you can. Take that off. Uh, and Redbeard, what was your thoughts there on TT's track? How's that? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's it, man, that's it. Yeah. Um, I'll okay. let Mark say something quickly first. Redbeard, what was your sure. thoughts on Tim's? Track there, and then we'll go to the final guest of the evening. I, I echo what Steve says and what Kimbo says um, about the, the kind of sound, the, the Lou Reed kind of sound to it. But uh, also I agree with Steve on the fact that um, it's one of those songs that definitely tells a story, which all, you know, like great songs tell great stories. And, um, you know, it's one of them songs that once you're into it, it's like reading a book, you know, you, you kind of, each each verse gives you another chapter, another chapter as you get to the end, and it, it just it's fantastic because it just kind of rolls along and kind of takes you with it. And uh, yeah, I really I'll, I'll tell you what that was outstanding, Tim. That was a really class. I, I appreciate that. Proud of that, mate. I, it, was I actually, it, was, it was actually perfect, and if it was fifteen minutes, it wouldn't bother me too much. But most That's radio cool. stations would say, "Give me a radio edit of that TT," you know. Yeah. So can Tim Hopkins, say something before Tim goes because that's only fair. Tim, and, and... yeah, I did. I did want to say something. So, uh, as a bass player, one of the things you're always trying to do is find that pocket, that um, that feel, that timing feel that just sits. And one of the things I feel about that piece, Tim, is uh, it really sits. And that's why I don't care how long it goes for because it just makes me, it just makes me feel good. Uh, just the timing on the snare and the interaction Thank between you. the bass and the guitar and the vocals and everything, it just sits perfectly. Can, can I say something, how much I appreciate what everybody says? It really means something to me, especially getting older and, you know, I'm still active, I'm still playing, but I, I so much appreciate what everybody said. But I have to give credit to the songwriter. I did manipulate the words. I did make a mine. I had to. I tried to shorten it at, at Paint the Sky Studios. I tried to, and it didn't work. It wasn't clicking like the way I wanted. So that was as short as I could make that story. Like Mark's saying, it's a story. Uh, but one thing, uh, I want to say the name of the writer. He, he lives in Canada, and his name is Bobby Dodd. And I did two or three songs of his, uh, which was a challenge because I write my own stuff. And then that drummer... That amazing drummer, his name is Tim Navoa. Just want to give credit to those guys because I think they make they made that song happen. Hey Tim, you're absolutely fantastic. What's the best way to find you? It's Tim William Turner on most social medias, isn't it? Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You know, I'll, I'll the next time I'm on a show, I'll make a list and I'll I'll say all of them. But hey, you know. dude, you've, dude, you've not even got a Facebook profile page. You've only got a profile. So I'm going to personally make you one. Uh, I made you. a fa I made a fan page, but nobody well, knows did. where it is. No you one knows one. where it is. <laughs> like three hey, people. Yay! I I'll make you one. Friends. Tim Turner. Until the next day. I love you, brother. Honestly. <laughs> Thank you. I so, love you. I love all going of you. Over to Canada. Uh, Tim Hopkins. He's now called Th. Because I can't call any of Tim. I can't just, you know, I just said all this. Tim, could you introduce yourself? Who is Tim Hopkins? And what's the story behind the song, Stay? Well, um, I am uh, I am a multi-instrumentalist. I, I play bass. I play bass since I was a teenager. I play guitar. I sing. I love to sing. Uh, and I don't get nearly enough opportunity to do any of those things these days because I live in the middle of nowhere. There are no other musicians around. Uh, so I, uh, I make uh, music uh, electronically is uh, what I would say. I don't make electronic music necessarily. I make music electronically because that's what I have uh, so an interest in at this point in my life and, uh, and the facility to do. Um, Stay is, uh, it's a bit of a difficult one for me to talk about. Uh, it was the first single that I released this year. Uh, I have a, a loved one uh, who has lived for most of their life with uh, with depression 
and uh, through much of their life has uh, talked about uh, leaving. And so uh, as with a lot of my music, though there are no words, uh, the music is very personal. And I, I always try to express the way I'm feeling and, and the emotion around something when I, when I write music. And that's what Stay is about. It's a little bit on the dark side, but I hope it also has the feel of something a little uh, uplifting and that there's a light. Um, so that's, that's what this one was written about. Hey, Tim, beautiful introduction. You're a very special man, a great musician, absolutely wonderful artist. And I'm going to let everybody say something quickly at the end of this track, if you're still here. Thanks for all staying here. Tim Hopkins, a.k.a. T.H. is his name now. <laughs> Well, minus the C, ladies and gentlemen, who know what I'm talking about, with his marvellous track, Stay. Enjoy, one love. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, bravo. Um, perfect way to end the show. I don't know what to say apart from wowzer. TH, <laughs> Tim Hopkins, ladies and gentlemen. Let, um, Kerry's very sorry that she had to leave, but uh, once she hears that, I'm sure she'll help you out as well, Tim. Let's go Kimbo, Charlie, and then the rest yeah, of the show. Kimbo, then Charlie. Kimbo, Charlie, and blank expression. Kimbo? So two things there. Uh, when I worked second shift many years ago, there was a guy on the radio. I would get off around midnight. His name was John DeLiberto. And maybe you've heard of him, maybe you haven't. But he played this type of ambient music, okay? It was very spacey, very like what's out there, the unknown, galactic. Um, and from that <laughs> guy I picked up, because I'm an amateur paleontologist, believe it or not, and uh, I would clean... 30 million year old skulls to this type of music because it was just so awesome that I was even doing that, that I was touching something that old. So, I mean, Tim, uh, I mean, that, that stuff right there, it's great. I mean, there's a whole niche for that. You need to start sending your stuff out there, bro. I mean, really, it's out there. It's out there. I like it. Hey, can I just jump in the night before you go, Charlie? That's the thing, right? See what I'm trying to build here? Is nothing for me at all, you know. I want to bring all the best people together and all your agents, your managers, your studios, your record labels, if they're good people, That's let's all come together and make great shit happen. And if Tim doesn't know what to do with his music, but you do over there, Denny, or something, let's all just do it for each other, man. Anyway, Charlie, then I'm going to do the round robin. So Charlie, then blank expression. Hey, um, can I uh, can I say something real quick about that that track? Is yeah, okay? of course you can. of course you can, man. Yeah, um, that track, uh, I really liked it really a lot because um, it's 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 really like who who said that Kimbo, right? Kimbo, hey, the guy who hey, said that. It's can really, I just introduce out. you, dude? Can I just introduce you? This is T G Venom. He's an artist. He's meant to be on. I'm sorry we didn't get you in in time, but um, bring yourself on camera. He wants to say something. Uh, we can't say no. We've not seen you, but. Come on the camera and see this and, and start that again. TG Venom, ladies and gentlemen, I'll bring you on a show next week, brother, to make up for this. But yeah, um, no one knows where you came from there. So just uh, see that again, my man, TG Venom. All right. So, oh, you want me to introduce myself right now or? Well, uh... well I was just letting people know because everyone was looking to see who was talking. talking. Because <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, because I'm, I'm new to this. Because he, uh, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm going to ask you the now to turn your camera on. You'll get an option to do it. And if oh, you my do, cam my camera is messed up right now. That's that's the problem. No, no worries. Continue anyway, my man. No worries. On you go, brother. Nice one. All right. But um, yeah, I, I'm I'm all new to this. By the way, I, he uh, what's his name? Spark Sparky. He wanted me to uh, join this. I'm like, all right, it seemed pretty cool, you know, share my music. We talk about music. It's all good. Um, but the two tracks I want to talk about was, uh, well, well, it's Tim. Tim from Arizona. That was the last guy, right? The one with the bass playing and the guitar playing before the electronic music was playing, right? Because I wanted to talk about that one as well. Everyone, all yeah. your mics are open, so just talk away. So Tim, TT is talking to you, brother. Yeah, yeah, let me yeah. go, PG. TG. Yeah, um, so the, the last track that I've heard, that was really nice. I really liked it because it was the music that I listened to and it's like, like the music that I, 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 I composed myself. And it's not like something contemporary, if that makes any sense. It's not something like, oh, well, you know, it's something that's just out now and it's like the same old, same old. It's like something like, it sounds like something you can hear in like a video game soundtrack. And that's something that people be saying about me. It's like, yo, TG Venom, your music is something that you could be in the, in the video game. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. I can, I can take that. In the last track that the other Tim was making, that was like very non-contemporary either. It was something that like, you have to have the mindset of an older person to appreciate that kind of track. You know, you have to be somebody that was like, either you grew up in that time frame. Or you're like an old soul, like you're a young guy, but you're an old soul. Do you be like, yeah, that's such a great track, you know? It's like something from the 1960s or 70s. I mean, that's just how I feel. And it's, you know, both the tracks are pretty great, you know? I mean, it's Hey, dude, great. I, I'm sorry to jump in. Who wants to hear a VG, a TG Venom song? Send it in the chat as soon as possible, right? And we'll still feature you, TG. But I'm going to continue with this round, Robin. Send your YouTube link in the track and we'll feature you in five minutes' time. 
Send it here in the chat. Just go right. here, copy the link, send it here. Right. Oh, somebody's getting called. Let, let's do the round robin, like you said. Russ Stalins, then Tim Turner. No, blank expression, then Russ. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was a great tune. Really enjoyed it. Um, me. <laughs> Well, I, say, I love Jean Michel Jarre, <laughs> and that was just like, whoa, man! Yeah. You know, Ronde Ronde, that sort of stuff. But oh, no. No. Uh, sorry, man, I don't know what's happened there. Sorry, blank expression, get muted. Could you start your comment again? It's music. I personally absolutely love Jean Michel Jarre, and that was just like. Sorry, it was Steve's Facebook. It was uh, like. Yeah. It's the whole family here. It's all good now, isn't it? Sorry, in they go, guys. Sorry about that. That's right. I'll get confused easily, so I'm totally I don't know where I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yes. I don't know if anybody heard what I said, so I'm going to say it again, because I think it's really important. Wow, I love jean michel Jarre. That was absolutely brilliant. Reminded me so much of him. Um, and I can imagine sticking it on my spaceship when I fly out to Alpha Centauri for the first time. So, yeah, you know, yeah. oh, I love that, man. <laughs> Um, I, I'd just like to say, I think we'd all like to say, we've just been blown away tonight, like, you know, um, everybody's music has been just so, you know, expecting a bad one because, oh, we're going to get a bad one. Oh, my God, not another good one. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, great. like, wow, I know what Sparky means. I mean, I've not seen all these, because this is our first time, we've not seen any previous no, ones. No. But, um, yeah, that's been great. Yeah, wow, guys. To be guys. a part of it tonight, yeah, so it's yeah. been pretty good. I mean, Honestly, I think we've broke the 1,200 uh, songs, Mark, tonight, and I've only started it last January. I, I'm not wanting to sound like a dickhead, but the, the podcast isn't that's my pinky. I'm toptalentpromotions.com. Check out the thousand articles I've written and every day on my website. I've met them all in at least this manner. But well said, lads, and thanks for that. I need some of this confidence. Russ, then TT, then Denny. Quickly, yeah. Russ, TT, Denny. Uh, Tim, you you know I think that your stuff is amazing. I think you do amazing work and uh, it's just uh, brilliant. Uh, I love what you do. Uh, but uh, this one, just uh, such a great message, mental health and uh, suicide prevention, such an important message. Uh, it's just a, just a great work and uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, great work as always, Tim. Well, thanks Russ. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, you know you turned me on the country, right? So <laughs> it's all fair. <laughs> well said, well said. Honestly, um, I don't know um, if I've been if I'm wasting everyone's. I'm not wasting everyone's time. I know everyone wants to talk here, right? But TG Venom's come in here. He was sitting in the waiting room. Um, I didn't have your song in time, but you're here now. If you can turn your video on, or at least come on and. TG Venom, when you can, come on, take over the mic when you're ready. But in the meantime, TT Turner, what was your thoughts on uh, that track there? So <clears throat> electronic music, you know, sometimes it can be repetitive uh, depending on the programs. And I don't know much about it. I, I dabbled in it a little bit many years ago. And I was so proud of what I accomplished. And, you know, I didn't play my guitar. I didn't play anything. I just did electronic music. But... Uh, when it has the variances and it has it's 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 not really repeating itself it's telling a story i i want to hear it and you can tell an experienced person at the helm um and i worked by the way with one who was a master at this kind of stuff and that's what tim is doing he it's not it's yeah okay it's electronic uh uh but you have to understand first of all personally tim is doing it because he lives in the middle of nowhere well lard you know i live in the middle of nowhere up in the mountains in arizona uh, there's no musicians here i well, i found one guy i wrote a song he wants me to work on it okay but <laughs> tim's music isn't doing that it's it's telling a story the whole entire song i was trying to focus on all the different things he was doing and I need to listen to it again. I will listen to it again. I know Tim supports me, and I'm going to support him. Well said, brother. So the two Tims, I can't wait to use to do something which is inevitable. Tim, Hopkins, Thanks. could you tell us the best way to find you and say anything else yeah. you want to do quickly? And TG Venom, get ready to take the mic, brother. All right. Well, I'm I'm on Spotify uh, as uh, not as TH, but uh, Tim Hopkins. 
uh, and uh, all the the social media is all Tim Hopkins sound one one word, um, and that's just because there was a there's a Tim Hopkins out there who is a world renowned jazz uh, saxophonist, and I didn't want to be confused because our music is completely different. But, hey. uh, Tim T H Hopkins is better, and Tim T T Turner that's unique. And who's just joined the party? Who's coming up next? T G Venom. Yeah. It's T H T T and T G. Oh, on the road. Thanks very much, Tim. What wonderful. You're meant to be the last <laughs> guest, but we've got a, we've got a surprise. His camera's not working. But T G Venom, take the mic. Introduce yourself. Where are you from, actually, brother? And what's the story behind your song Vampire Bloodline? All right, so I'm from America, you know, the United States of America. And um, this track right here was done because somebody makes comic books, right? And he wanted me to make music for him. And I met him like late last year, around like, I would say my November, December, or was it October, November, December, around there. And he's like an independent guy who makes his own comic books for like vampires and stuff. And I was like, all right, I'll make some music for you for free. I, you don't have to pay me, do it free because you're a cool guy and stuff like that. Because I, some people out there want money. I want you to give me money and all that. And I had to deal with a bunch of crap with somebody like that from Finland. But I don't want to talk about her. Screw her. But, um, but yeah, this track right here, that's, that's pretty much the whole entire story right there. <laughs> Without further ado, thanks for honestly um, jumping in. It's it's amazing that you're here. Um, oh, oh 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 oh! And one more one more thing about that track that just played that electronic track. That sounds like something that you would hear, like on a like a like a sci-fi mystery type of like a that type of thing. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like sci-fi, but also like mystery, like dark mystery sci-fi feel element to it. Not like anything like scary or anything, but like very mellow. But it's like somebody, like a detective, probably working on something. You know, I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody on here. Probably oh, you think it, it does sound matter. crazy. It does. But, but <laughs> let's get on with this final surprise track because we've been here for 150 minutes already. So we have TG Vampire Bloodlines by TG Venom. The mysterious TG Venom. We can't see him, we can only hear him. Sit back and enjoy. One love, ladies and gentlemen.
Was like watching a horror movie with any visuals. Um, that was absolutely fantastic, and I, I didn't expect to um, have that song on the show. And TG, what a great track, man! We're going to end the show with the two radio personalities who've got the radio shows, Kimbo and Charlie. What was your thoughts on TG Venom's track there? Well, to me, I was going over uh, various movie, you know, scenes that this could back up. Um, I think that is definitely a niche for this. Um, it could be sci-fi, somebody on a barren planet, and then realizing they're there alone. Um, really, the perfect marriage is video and the audio, okay? Uh, it's dramatic, darkly dramatic, darkly foreboding. It's a nice backdrop, maybe even for something paranormal, okay? And I don't care. You go on TV and you watch Ghost Hunters or anything like that. And this is the kind of music that's there. Yeah. So you have you have something that you could throw in a niche very easily. Um, so I, I thought I thought it was fine. And let me ask you a question. You're you're in the US. Are you in Bridgeport? Bridgeport Chronicles, is that Bridgeport, Connecticut? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, see, uh, no. the thing is that Again, I made the comic book for this guy, right? And if yeah. anybody wants any information, they can ask me on Instagram because that's where you can okay. find me. Gotcha. Uh, besides YouTube, but it's on, I'm on mainly on Instagram. But he was like, hey, you know, I would like some music for my comic books. I don't know mm -hmm. where he came up with Bridgeport Chronicles. I didn't ask him all that. Okay. But he wanted me to make some music for him, and I did it for free because I'm like, oh, it's better publicity, and you know, I could get more plugins and that stuff like that. That was very nice of you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because a lot of people I know, a lot of people wanted to do it for yeah. money and stuff like that. But he seemed like a I cool did. guy, so yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll do it for free. I'll do it for free. I'll do it. And well, the only um, reason I ask about Bridgeport is because I'm from Connecticut myself. So oh, Bridgeport. oh, okay, okay. And that's why. Yeah, I asked. yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I, I love TG Venom's secretness, don't you guys? The fact that we can't see him, he's just come on here. Can't see TG. Hey, absolutely. We've got TTTH and we've, now we've got TG. Charlie Souza, what was your thoughts? Uh, what was your thoughts to TG Venom here, brother? And then well, I, said, I was, I went sailing on that one. Um, 
it was very dreamy. I, you know, I watched this, what is this British TV show called Vera? You ever watch that? She's got background music just like that. It's kind of like mysterious. And then, you know, here comes somebody and there they go. And they're, you know, it was good. I liked it. And that's about, I can, you know, that's about, I can say Mr. Souza. Yeah. Yeah, DG, DG Denham, do you know that Charlie Souza, who you're talking to now has been up uh, working with Tom Petty up on stage and everything. You know, you're out, you're in the presence of greatness here, man. And I, I'm your connection on LinkedIn, TG Venom. But what's the best way for anyone to find you? Do you have a website or any of these things, brother? Yeah, like I said, I'm on Instagram and really on YouTube. I mean, if you, and my music on Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, iTunes. It's pretty much a lot of streaming sites. Somebody said I'm a vampire. No, no. I, uh, as, as a matter of fact, it's Boy, funny it's... that y'all y'all say that. I don't even like vampires. I really don't. That's no joke. <laughs> I'm, de I'm dead serious. Hey, I really don't. I'm more hey, like a sci-fi guy and I like the Terminator and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. Robocop. I'm like that guy. Like, you know, the alien and predator. I like the sci-fi stuff. I could just, I just knew how to do it because I was just messing around with that track. And when I was like, I, because everything I do is improvised. It's just like, it just comes to me. Everything just comes to me right on that spot. I already have something playing on my head, but it, everything just comes to me right, right there hey, on the hey, spot. Hey, Dad, you've got three other guys that want to say something to you quickly before we end the show. Blank expression, three of. What was your thoughts there, man? And we're going to end this show because it's been a belter. Oh, is, uh, it's, yeah, excuse yeah. your profanity, but I'm shitting myself. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like, we've got darkness outside there. Yeah, I, don't yeah. know, I don't know what sort of light you guys in the US and Canada have got, but it's dark out there, man. I thought it was a great track, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, that is um, brilliant. Very sort of ambient, you know, very like, yeah, very sort of creepy. You know? yeah. I'd say you could easily fit into a horror <laughs> film or, you know, a horror game or something. But no, I loved it. I thought it was really cool. And I'm with you, TG. Uh, uh, T yeah, it's TG, isn't it? I'm yeah. with you, TG. I love all the Terminator <laughs> stuff for sci-fi, mate. Yeah. yeah. Brother. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's how it yeah. goes. That's yeah, how it what, goes. A wonderful show this has been. It's been amazing. And TG, you were the 16th guest there. So I'll show, I'll send you the full show and you can see who was all before you tonight. We're going to say goodbye to Facebook Live. Once you feel goodbye, Facebook Live. And the main recording for you that know, we like to, we want world peace. So we all want to have uh, our VVs in the air. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. One love.